Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. And today's video, I'm going to show you how I had a finished painting. You've seen much of it being created on my YouTube channel. It's called Hanging by a Thread, my very first painting on a uh, canvas. And after I finished this painting, which is three feet by six feet, I needed to stretch it over stretcher bars. And I had uh, Nathan Watkins, uh, he has a brand new business in Hamilton, Montana called Wide Angle Photography and Printing. Uh, help me, he first came to my studio and photographed all of my work for my upcoming uh, solo exhibition at Moscow Contemporary coming up uh, this fall, October through December. And then uh, he said, well, I'd be more than happy to help you stretch the painting when you finish it. So I took my rolled up painting over to his wide angle photography place in Hamilton. And he's just a great guy. He's so helpful, so personable, easy to understand. And I recorded him as he stretched this big painting over stretcher bars, which kind of freaked me out. I didn't want to do it myself the very first time. So he's got some tips and tricks. He's very experienced at doing this kind of thing. So that's what this video is about. I hope you enjoy it. And uh, if you happen to live anywhere close to Nathan or in the US, uh, he does very high end clay prints and he can uh, mount them and, and uh, print them on canvas. Um, he's just a great guy. So I have something soft. I like using this quarter inch foam. Nice. Packing foam, but a blanket, just as long as you've got something that's got a little bit of cushion. Okay. Hey everybody, this is Nathan and he is Hello. in Hamilton, Montana with a brand new location here. Tell us your address at White Angle here. So 237 North 2nd Street. 237 North 2nd Street in Hamilton. So everybody, you guys should check him out because he's got an awesome place and he's also a photographer. He does amazing photography. And he came to my studio recently and photographed all of my art for my upcoming show. And he's offering to help me He's going to teach me how to stretch this canvas painting over a frame because I don't, I had troubles with corners. <laughs> it's super simple. Um, there's just a couple different processes, but we'll kind of go through it as I start. All right. Here's the back side of the painting. You can see it's got some stains on it from another painting. What's all that? This is my air compressor. So oh. I use a pneumatic stapler oh. just because I do staple a lot, but sure. a regular hand stapler like this works great too. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. if you're stapling a lot, this yeah. will give you carpal tunnel at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can vouch for that. <laughs> so I do have to turn it on. So it is going to make some noise it's for okay. a minute. It's okay. I can always block it out. And then I just use three, three eighths depth staples. Okay. Um, one thing you do want to make sure is the crown on them, you, you don't want them much thinner than that. They make some really thin staples. Oh, okay. And then when if you're going to use a pneumatic stapler, you want to make sure your PSI is lower than 90 PSI. If you go any higher, your staples will blow through the canvas. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you're going to use a pneumatic stapler, set it at like 80 PSI. All don't right. go any higher. All right. That's good advice. And then glasses, yeah. if you're going to be doing it with a pneumatic. We're going to go ahead and center the frame. Okay, so I had this frame made for me, and it is actually called a strainer bar and not a stretcher bar. Um, and you're like, what is the difference between a yep. strainer so bar? I'm going to show you real quick. Okay. So, this is a stretcher bar, and these ones in particular I really like yeah. because it's a really pronounced oh, lip. Yeah. And it so, is. it holds the canvas up off the bar sure. quite far, sure. whereas the strainer bars. They're, and they're, these are fine. This has got enough of a lip here that yeah. it's going to hold the canvas away. Right. But you can see how much yeah. deeper that is. That I would have preferred that, but, yeah. you know, that's okay. And you can get these in different depths. Um, they do make one that's two and a half inches deep. Um, you probably only want that for stuff this size or bigger. Yeah. Um, and then on a piece like this, I think we're okay with the cross break these cross braces here. Yeah. But I think one in the middle would be beneficial for sure. something this size. Yeah. Because when you start to stretch it, you're going to be putting a lot of tension on the middle and you can see where it's going to flex. So having a cross brace in the middle would definitely help it. But I'll, I'll make sure I don't go so tight that it's going to flex on. On some, anytime you go, I would say anytime you go longer than 40 inches, yeah. I would have a cross brace in the middle. Just sure. as a precaution. So, Go ahead and kind of start to get this centered. 
Yeah, I don't have a lot of overlap. That's because this is my first work on canvas, yep. everybody. Are I'm, you now? Are you putting this in a frame, or are you going to gallery wrap this? You're going to get. Okay. Um, it's gonna, not going to have a frame around it. Correct. Here. Okay. Correct. No frame on this guy. Yeah, I like the contemporary look of no frame. Plus, it's so big that you know. Right. Frame <laughs> would be a very expensive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people that I'm like, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do something large, gallery wrap it because it's gonna save you a ton of money. And then the neat thing is, is down the road, if you ever want to frame it. Hey, and just, do it. just so you know, the painting is exactly uh, marked. Where So actually, I'm not sure. Once you get that all situated, you want to make, make sure that, yep. yeah, just so you know. Because like that part I did measure. Now, whether it's square or not is another question. Yeah, we'll, we'll double check Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. So hey. Nate, Nathan does Chicle prints, which are so cool. And he actually can handle some of the shipping. Right, Nathan? Yep, absolutely. So okay. if you have customers that you want me to ship direct to, I can definitely do that That's for you. Awesome. Um, I don't do, I, I can ship stuff internationally, uh -huh. but I usually just do it through the post office. And so sure. it's a little bit trickier when we're doing something like that. But um, okay. if you have any questions, you can call me and I can definitely walk you through it. So all we're doing is, is we're just lining up the canvas to the edge of the stretcher bar. Thank you. So that, it will be perfect. You're talking about the painting, right? Correct. Stuff, yeah. Yes. Yep. It's hard because you're like, you know, the painting's on the underside, but I can see that you can tell where yep. the edge yep. is. Yep. You're just basically pulling it yeah. to where it yeah. lines up with the edge. Now, you do want to favor just a hair on one side because as oh. you start to stretch, it's going to pull it a little bit. That so, makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to make sure you air a little bit. And every canvas is different. Some canvases are more pliable than others, um, have a lot of stretch. This one's pretty tight, so it, it's not going to have as much give. So this one, you're probably going to want to apply a little bit more pressure stretching it. And did you say it's like the cheaper canvases that are like stiffer? It's, it's not necessarily cheaper. It's just how they're made. There's some really high-end canvases that are really not stretchy. pliable at all. Oh. And then there's some that are very, very light that are designed to be easier to stretch. I kind of like middle of the road. I don't like them too stretchy and I don't like them too tight, you know, um, so... And does that, Goldilocks. <laughs> does that have anything to do with whether they're gessoed or not, pre-gessoed? Yeah, so yeah, gesso will definitely tighten them up. Yeah. And uh, like I was saying, so one of the coolest little tricks, if you ever stretch a canvas and you get it all done and it's still a little bit ripply, you can take Liquitex matte medium and brush it on the back of the canvas, put it out in the sun, and it will shrink it up, tighten it up, and it'll take all your little ripples and dimples out of the canvas. So if you ever get one where you can't get it, right on the money and that's on the entire back i thought you meant just the corner well you could do it in the corner yeah oh, okay. if, if it's if you've got significant rippling in the middle you're kind of going to brush where the rippling is. you don't have to do the whole canvas okay. just the areas where it's bad that is such a huge tip i yeah. hope all you guys heard that because i had such troubles i did this at home with my own tools but my corners were ripply and then he came to my studio to photograph my work and he said oh all you have to do is put the liquitex matte medium on the corners and presto it it, it definitely uh kind of shrinks so yep. that is the biggest tip for it, framing and it if you have one that's really bad and you're like there's no way it's going to work still try it we had one where the canvas i could put my hand through it out almost a <laughs> foot and we put that on there oh and it shrunk God. it and took it out we did we were so blown away we didn't yeah. think it was even going to work that's and, unbelievable yeah, so okay it's a great Great trick. Okay, here he goes with the So you're gonna start in the middle. Yeah. And all you're gonna do is, so that's the side that I'm gonna tension back over. Oh, so okay. this side, I'm just gonna secure, put a couple staples. Okay. And on something this long, I would recommend doing just a couple. So about two inches apart. Yep, or, okay. exactly. Great, great. So you're gonna have that in the middle and then you're going to take the canvas and hold it along with the stretcher bar so you don't move it. And Got then it. you're just going to spin it around. Okay. And again, having something soft like this, it won't hurt your painting. Mm -hmm. Stretch of our flyer. So these ones, these are the cast ones. You can get these on Amazon. They run about 35 bucks. Okay. There's the Fredericks ones. They're really cheap. And if you press too tight, they will break on you. Oh these seem to be more durable. So I recommend these. They're black. And then they're kind of rough. So I just took some hose. Oh, and cut it and okay. put it over for handles. And you always start with the middle of the long side of the canvas when okay. you do this. Yeah. So now we're gonna, another another thing, 
I've done this enough over the years, but this is actually something I would really recommend doing okay. your first few times. Oh. Have a hard piece here. Oh, okay. Because as you're stretching, I have had my pliers slip and go into the canvas oh. through the canvas. So if you do that, having something there initially, oh, yes. and I'll just do it as an example, but sure. this will save you heartache. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So okay. now you're gonna just kind of line up with there and you can see there's kind of a definitive line right there yes. from yes. stretching it. And uh, so we're just gonna stretch it. Right. The tensioning's it's kind of hard to explain. You're gonna feel you're gonna kind of go to where it just snugs up and you really can't go much further. You don't want to go any tighter than that. Okay. And then you're gonna put two staples just right. like that. And you can see you'll have a line right down yes. the middle. Now you're gonna come over here. And you're going to do the same thing right in the middle okay. and watch how that that'll start to see how it's coming out and you got to kind of like i said go a little tight it does require a little bit of muscle to get it to pull out especially when it's a tight canvas like got this it. something a little bit more stretchier and that's the other thing you want to be careful as you're stretching you'll pull it you'll feel it come tight don't go much because they, there are some canvases that do tear really oh, easy. Oh, wow, yeah. If they're thin, um, right? Yep. And then we're going to come over here. Okay, so I'm going to yeah. pull that tight. Yeah, I've seen that, that little thing on the back side. Correct. It goes against there, yeah. I don't know why mine didn't work that way, but mine did not work that way. <laughs> yep, so this, this piece is designed to yeah, ratchet sure. over that. And there's a lot of different types of stretcher pliers. Um, but that's your favorite. Those are my favorite. They just seem to hold up the best. So... Now what you're going to do is you're going to pull the canvas up and you're just going to look at it and you're going to check to make sure everything is lined up and it is pretty much. Yeah, good job. And then what you're going to have, awesome. you can't really see it on here because it's just so it's such a light piece. Yeah. But you'll have a diamond shape. Okay, right, because you've stretched it for pieces. How you stretch. So you, yeah. as long as you have kind of that diamond pattern and then what you're going to do is you're going to come back to here. And we're going to put in, we're just going to start alternating okay. back and forth. Every canvas is a little different, so you may have to adjust. Oh, you with the pressure, adjust, huh? Yeah, you may have to adjust the pressure on Got your it. stapler just a little bit. So did it not go in all the way? It, well, it did, so it was pulling through on there, so Got I it. just put a couple more there. So you go to either side of the original, and then you go to the other side. Correct. Okay. So what you're basically doing is, is you have this rippling across the canvas. So as you do that, you're basically just fanning it out. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to about here. Okay. And then you're going to do that side. And then you're going to do that because what you're trying to do is you're just trying to take the whole canvas from the center and just fan it out in terms of the stretching. Um, if you do one side and don't do the ends, especially on, and this really applies to large canvases. When you're doing smaller canvases, you can get away with just doing one edge first, doing the next edge. But when it's a big piece like this, you do have to kind of do it in this process. Otherwise, you will have rippling along yeah. the canvas. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> the bigger they are, yep. the more trouble. So. They are, absolutely. And we may <laughs> still, even with me stretching, we still may have a little bit of rippling. That's okay. We know this, the solution. Exactly. Yeah, I'm really interested to see how you do the corners because yep. that's where I got stuck. Yeah. Corners are actually the simplest part of the whole thing. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I like to hear that. And everyone's got a different way of doing them. Like there are a lot of YouTube videos. Uh-huh that you can watch. The way I learned it, I learned it from a, a YouTube video that I saw a long, long time, and I've just always done it since. Well, there's nothing like seeing it in person. And, yep. and this personal touch is what Nathan's all about. What is your website again? The print shop uh, website is wideangleprint.com. Okay. And then the gallery site is wideangleart.com. But Super. yeah, I, art is a, the most personal thing. And so I know how every artist has different needs and outcomes of how they want their stuff to look so i uh it's nice when you can talk to an actual human being that... yeah and people can call you from anywhere in the country <laughs> yep, right yep, so there yep. you go guys yeah i can i mean i've got people back east that i do work for like for me it was really great to have nathan come to my studio because i have really large work and i could not envision putting it all into a big truck and getting it over to somebody who could photograph it that would have been impossible yeah. so that was a real bonus for me 
Okay. You can kind of see coming. how it's working. Yeah. So nice. Look them good so far. We're yeah. gonna flip over and do this side sure, now. Sure. Sure. And you're flipping because you really don't have much room on the back side. I don't, yeah. And actually, I could if I wanted to. This works out pretty slick. Well, the foam is an amazing idea. Yeah, yeah. so Protect this is everything. just packing foam. You can sure. get it on uh, Amazon. Uline sells it. Okay. I actually really recommend it for shipping your artwork. Oh, yeah. It's way better than uh, bubble wrap just because it doesn't compress much more than that. I wrap all my canvas wraps in this and ship them that. Never really had a problem with them. When you ship, how much extra space around, say, a canvas print? So I would give yourself about four inches. Yeah. Okay. And then what I do, when I box them, I wrap them in a piece of foam like this initially. And then I will take paper, craft paper, and I just wad um, it up. Oh. And I put that all yeah. the way around in the, and then I drop the piece down in and then I do paper over the, you still have to ensure everything of because course. even if you pack it just perfectly, there is still the chance something <laughs> sharp is going to go right through. <laughs> Don't put too many fragile stickers <laughs> on because that almost, I think, eggs them on. I know. I yeah, agree. Uh, That's so funny. But, um. I, yeah, always ensure when it's a really large piece like this, you're almost better off just rolling the canvas and shipping the print rolled and then having it stretch locally. Because this yeah. is so easy and it's not that expensive to do, most frame shops can do it. And that's one other little thing, tip that I'm going to say. A lot of frame shops will trim off the canvas right to the edge yeah, here. About that. Which I understand it makes it look cleaner and finished. Sure. However, if you ever need to restretch it or you're going to pull it off the stretcher frame to ship, leaving this extra is so nice for the framer that's going to restretch it in uh -huh. the road. So what I recommend doing is just taking a staple and putting it in the middle there and right. just kind of securing that so it's not flopping around. But then that way, if you ever need to pull it off the frame, you've got that extra material to work with, which that, is really nice. That is great advice because if it gets restretched too, it could be a thicker, like a thicker, deeper. Um, Correct. Right that too. Thing. Absolutely. Good point. Yep. Yeah. And um, what, oh yeah, when you hang it too, uh, on say whatever, like I don't think I'll have a hanging wire, or uh -huh. should I have a hanging wire? Maybe I should. Yeah, and I and I'll show you how I do them okay. on here. Uh, sure. You know, I always, a lot of frame shots will do them on the outside. I actually like to oh. tend to do them on the inside. Yeah, that makes sense. So that way it doesn't hit against the wall. Yeah. Okay. Because I was, it's funny, like, I'm not, so I'm not used to using canvas on stretcher bars. So I was actually trying to hang it from the the frame itself. I mean, uh -huh. the you know, the stretcher bars. But uh -huh. that does not work because you've got too much extra canvas. Well, and a lot of people do the sawtooth hangers. Yeah, yeah. And you can do that. The only thing I don't like about that is, is it makes the job of the person hanging it much yeah, more difficult. And by it. doing a wire hanger, it that tends to be pretty simple. Okay. There is another uh, product. Okay. They call them a Z-bar. Hmm. And Z bars are actually really slick, and and for a piece this size, I would almost recommend this over a wire hanger. What it is is it's a French cleat. So one piece attaches to your wall, and the other piece is attached to the That's canvas. Cool. Yeah, I see. And it locks into place. And and what's really cool about that is is if you don't get it exactly right in right. terms of centering, yeah, you can oh, slide it a little that bit. That is so nice. <laughs> One cleat for a piece of size or yeah, two? Yeah, th okay. these are rated for, I mean, th these are really designed for like mirrors, so oh. lots of weight. Um, the most important thing is uh, on something this size, if it was really heavy, they make this in a 24 inch size, and I would recommend getting that size. Your studs are 16 inch on center, and so oh. this way you can attach both screws into studs, and it's not going anywhere. You right. can hang off. So yes. if it's something really, really heavy, and you've got glass in it, I would recommend these. For something like this though, the wire hanger would work just fine too. Oh, so great. either way, but these are slick. And you can get those at the hardware store, a Lowe's oh, Home Depot. Nice. They sell them, so. Yeah. Okay, so we'll finish up here and then I'll show you the next step. I will say when it's a thicker canvas like this and it doesn't have as much stretch in it, it is a little bit easier in terms of not having as much rippling. Just okay. the way it stretches out, you just won't have as much. When you have a really thin canvas, that's when you do uh -huh. have to apply quite a bit of tension to get it really uh -huh. tight so it doesn't sag. Well, and I think canvas wraps, like I said, from a cost standpoint for people buying prints yeah. or original, it's just so much cheaper than 
framing. I mean, you frame something this size, you're yeah. going to spend a minimum of a thousand dollars probably on, yeah. a, on just a basic frame. Right. So by doing the wrap, it's just save a lot, and it, it looks does. really good in it contemporary. Does. Yep. I would say most of my canvas wraps that I sell, uh, rarely do I have a frame on them. And I'll give you guys a tour of his place here because he's got a lot of his photographs on the wall. They're so gorgeous and he's a nature photographer. How long have you been doing photography? So I've had my gallery in St. George for 20 years and I've been wow. doing pictures since I was about 18. So wow. I've been about 23 years now. That's right. So, That's right. Your business is still active in St. George as correct. well. I've got so. a little gallery in St. George, and then I have okay. a really good friend that's an artist that graduated from Art Center uh, nice. down in Southern Cal, and he has his uh, little studio in the back along with his work okay. in the gallery as well. His name's Reese Thompson. Uh -huh. ReeseThompsonArt.com. He's an amazing artist. How do you spell? A, how do you spell Reese? Uh, R-E-E-C-E. -E. Okay, so we've got the long parts done. And like I said, you want to go to about where you've got about a foot to a foot and a half okay. or something this size. Yeah. yeah. That much left. Okay. Now you did the long sides and you didn't, you're not a foot away at the ends here. On the not, long, not yet. Not so yet. now we're going to do those. So oh, okay. the idea is, is we want to get, we want to get these done first oh, okay. and kind of get it pulled out. And oh. now we're going to do the ends. Oh, that makes sense. I, I didn't do that. I did. I went, I went long. Short, yeah. Long short. Yeah. Okay. And you can, you can, like, I mean, I, I could have, you know, depending on the canvas that I'm working with, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to like right about here and then I'll start stretching these a little bit sure. and then I'll come back and finish this. Okay. But this canvas, it's thick enough. I think you can just do the ends and you're good. So now we're going to, and this is where I tend to put a little bit more pressure and tightness on the canvas just to pull out any little wrinkles. Again, be really careful. Don't go better to understretch than to overstretch. <laughs> <laughs> overstretch, you will have issues. <laughs> yeah, got it. Well, most of us are not strong enough to probably overstretch. So. <laughs> but it is what I, so this is another recommendation is take a, you know, scrap piece of canvas and take a set of stretcher bars. Practice, practice, practice. Do it a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and then do the right. actual piece. So the corners, as you get closer to the corners, I do tend to put a little, I try to put as maximum pressure as I can to really pull the corners sure. out. Because normally where you're going to have rippling mm -hmm. is you're either going to have it in the middle, you're going to have it in the corners, yeah. or you're going to have it somewhere in the middle. Yeah, that's where I had it in the corners, yep. for sure. So you will just want to apply a little bit more pressure. So a friend of mine made these a long time ago for me, uh -huh. and this is something I, I never use them, oh. but they're nice to have. He made those for you. He made these for <laughs> your situation. Remember how you were telling yeah. me you're having a problem with the corners. Yeah. He's had some stretcher bars where these were too wide. Yes, yes. So he I has a that. machine shop, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and he cut them down for me. Oh so, my gosh. But that's what they look like, so yeah. when you go on to Amazon. Uh -huh. That's what you're looking for. Okay, so on the short ends, you're always going to leave yourself about three to four inches. Because okay. um, that's where we're going to do the folding and all that. And you just want to leave yourself plenty of room. Sure. So now Got we're going to come and flip this around. Okay. Okay. Now we're going to finish this side. And again, more pressure than what you've been applying to the rest of the canvas just to really... So especially in the end. Pull it tight. Yeah. Got it. Okay. A lot of trial and error over the years. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> the matte medium thing, when we did that, I was like, you know what? <laughs> you don't have to be a good canvas structure. You can just put that on the back and it fixes yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. So. That Well, that's a big thing. But it's nice to be able to do it this way and then you don't have to right. mess with that. Yeah, that's the last resort. Yep. And... It's your get out of jail free card. Yeah. So three inches from the end you're going to do and then can I just the Correct. corners. So, yep. And okay. then I'll show you the corners and we'll do, I'll go really slow on it because it is kind of, and again, my way of doing corners, there's yeah. probably 10 different ways to do yeah. them. Right. This is just the way that I've always done them. That's so fine. It's not a right or wrong. Well, and it's a little scary for some people because they don't want to 
necessarily cut into the canvas and that's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna cut oh. some pieces to do it. <laughs> so it, that part does scare people and you don't have to cut it, but you will have a bulkier corner it, that yeah. doesn't look clean. In order to eliminate that, you do have to cut out some material. Okay, so now we'll do a corner. Okay. And if you want to come over on this sure. side can and get okay. a better view. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to take the canvas and you're going to pull it right. just like that. Like you wrap a package. Yep, we're doing like a bed corner. And then you're going to take and you're going to fold that down like that. Okay, okay. makes sense. Now, I can leave it just like that. But again, you can see all this material is building up and yeah. it's getting bulky. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and I'm going to fold it. I'm just showing you what yes. it would look like if so, you weren't going to do it. But you can yeah. see how bulky yeah. this gets with all this extra material being folded oh, over yeah. itself. So we're going to cut it. Okay. And the way I do it is first I take it like that right. and I pull tight. Sure. And then I pull tight down here. Uh -huh. And what this does is it creates the, the, marks. the little crease that you need to cut down. Uh -huh. Okay. So now you're just going to take the canvas sure. and you're going to cut down, down to about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Got it. Half inch. Okay. Don't go any further than sure. that. Sure. And then sense. you're going to take this piece and you're going to cut down just like that. Okay. So you're really just cutting on that one side. You're piece. just cutting out that extra piece Got that's going to sit um, underneath that okay. creates that bulk. Yeah. Now you can see how much yeah, flatter it that's lays. That's really nice. Wow. So then you're going to take your stretcher pliers mm -hmm. and you're going to pull really tight. And then you're going to put your staple nice. just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to oh. take that piece. Okay. Again, okay. we're just trying to reduce the amount of yeah. canvas material that's going to be there. And this doesn't affect, like if you have to restretch this canvas, it would affect it if you were ever going to do it on a deeper stretcher bar. So if you were going to do that, then you would want to leave it bulky. Sure. But uh, in this situation, yeah. you don't need to worry about that. So now, and this is kind of, dexterity and your fingers getting it to do this right. but you're going to take your canvas and you're just going to kind of walk it back up okay. and a lot of times you'll see canvases where they're done like that that's not right oh okay you, you know I, I don't that's yeah. not a clean look no, no, so no, what no. you want to do is you want to just work the canvas back up okay so it's straight to where it's straight yeah. and in line with that that does look better more professional yep. for sure and then you're going to take your scissors and you're gonna cut right down. <laughs> I know this is scary. This, well, it's not this, easy. This, yeah, it's yeah. Be promised easy. Yep, yep. <laughs> so you're gonna cut down this, and again, oh my gosh, don't go down. No, right. Past there. Got it. So like a quarter of an inch. Yep. And then you're gonna cut right down just like that. Okay. Got it. And then you're gonna cut this. Wow. Well, so really, you should only have four pieces left. See what like, it look like. <laughs> so yeah, you'll have some triangles. <laughs> That's what it should kind of look all like. Right, and then all right. you're going to take this mm -hmm. and you're going to fold it over. And now we're going to come back and we're going to finish this out. Another another little trick, if you do have a thin canvas uh -huh. and you're trying to get it tight and you're having a hard time gripping it, yeah. you can double up the canvas like that. Oh, okay. Which kind of makes it a little bit easier for the pliers to okay. grip onto. Yeah, that makes sense. So... A lot of times what happens is these pliers don't come together really tight. So there will be a little bit of gap. Ah. So you'll be stretching and it doesn't really hold the canvas it'll and slip. it'll slip. So if you double up the canvas, that kind of helps eliminate that issue. Yeah, that's a good tip too, because some canvases are thin and yep, exactly. you might have to do that. Again little bit tighter towards the corners. Cool. And then this is this is where I, you're going to want to apply yeah. just a little bit more pressure because then this is going to pull this really nice and tight yeah. against the edge there. It's looking amazing. Yeah, it's like such a professional job. <laughs> Try! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not sure I'll be doing this myself. <laughs> kind of glad you moved here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So then, now you could call it finished right there like that. Yeah. 
and you ask me, you, you tell me if you want me to do it. But normally what I do is, is I cut that off on an angle. I think that makes sense. Put yeah. a staple. Yeah, it, it just looks cleaner. cleaner. Yeah. So I just do that. Awesome. Nice. That does and look so good. Put a staple right there and that's the finished corner. Nice. So you nice can, and tight. Yeah. You can almost um, sign that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, like I said, if you wanted to, you could go along and trim this extra off and then it makes it look super clean, but I'm going to leave it because yes. if you ever want to restretch it, then you got that extra room. I think that's a great idea. Okay. And then we're just going to rinse and repeat. Same thing over here. So. I'm just taking that cam. We'll do it. This is good because you'll sure, have it from it a different is. angle. Yeah. So you're just taking that canvas and you're pulling tight. Got it. And then you're folding. Uh -huh. Just like that. Got it. And what's great is it creates all your crease lines. Yeah. So you just cut down. Okay. Again, I always go just about a quarter of an inch to half, you know, half inch. Yeah. Don't go any more than that. Right. So you should just have a, a little triangle. triangle. Got it. Okay. So if you have a rectangle, you know you messed yes. up. Yes. <laughs> or, or a circle. A polygon or anything else. Like, Trapezoid. No. <laughs> you did something wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Sew it back on. <laughs> Start over. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. Okay. And then you're just pulling it tight again. And then the thing to make sure is to kick this in uh, underneath before you make that, that final makes, staple. That makes sense. And then again, we're gonna take, and we're just gonna cut like on a 45 there. All right. And then I put one more staple right there. And that all that does is keep this from sliding out on you. That does make sense. And then it allows you to roll the canvas. And this is the part that, anytime I show someone to do a corner, this is the part that gets people kind of confused. And all you're, yeah, all you're doing is you're just walking the canvas yeah. back up to where it creates that fold right there. And you just have to kind of play around with it and adjust. Sure, I think that does but it's look not, so good. Yep. Yeah. I, I've seen somewhere it's just, it's this big wad <laughs> on the corner and it, it just, it looks bad. <laughs> yeah. That's, I know what you mean. I switched a canvas for our granddaughter and, and that's how it looks. <laughs> yeah. but good thing she's only two. So again, just come down to where I'd say a half inch, yeah. you know, I wouldn't go anymore. Right. And then because you have that line already, yeah. you're basically going to leave yourself a half inch okay. quarter and you're just going to work your way down. Sure. So the key to cutting is just leave a little extra. Yep. Like yeah. When in doubt. Yeah. Air, air on the, you know, side of, <laughs> yeah, it's better to have more than not enough. So, right. and then I just cut that piece off. Yeah. You can kind of square that off like that. So that's kind of, that's really how it should look. You're just, otherwise you have all those pieces folded on top. It just, it creates way too much bulk. Yeah, I know. I got it. This is so much better. And then we're going to finish stretching this side. When you first start out, if you're going to use a pneumatic stapler, Set it at like 50, 40 to 50 PSI and try that. And then if it's not punching them down, go up like 10 PSI. At a time, yeah. But don't go over 90. <laughs> <laughs> you say it, that. It will go right through. <laughs> you say that like you have experience. Yes. Well, and every canvas, like I said, is different. I've had some yeah. canvases where I had to go to 90. And some, it's That's... like at, at a, you know, at 40, it was... Almost sure. too much. Wow. Little hammer. Yeah. That's a this good idea. is the greatest tool in the world. Which one is that? That's a staple remover. Oh, yes, I have one of those. So this yes. one's a fantastic one. Those are great. It's just an upholstery staple remover. Yeah. But you're definitely going to want one. To get them out in case you out. make a boo-boo or something, yeah. You so can use a screwdriver, but it is way more clumsy to do it that way. Makes sense. So again, on here, and it's kind of just positioning yourself yeah. on the canvas, Got it. but this is where you're going to kind of take a little bit of muscle and you're going to kind of pull it tight. Right. Oh. And then again, we're just going to cut right on that angle like that. So it's nice and clean. Yeah. Staple right there. 
So now we have that corner done. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is before you do the corners, pull your canvas up. I already knew I had this tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But pull your canvas up and check to see if there's any kind of rippling. Okay. If there is, now is the time to come back oh. with your staple puller. Yeah. Pull your staples oh. and retention to get it tighter. Wow. If you go ahead and do the corners, and you can still go back and do it. Yeah. But it's a lot easier to do it before you've done that. So, corners are okay. So yeah, so when you get your ends, when you get the lengths and short sides done, just pull it up. Yeah. And just sight down it and make sure it's all smooth before you do the corners. Makes so. sense. Or there's Liquitex. <laughs> or there's Liquitex. <laughs> okay. Super. The one the one thing I will caution about the Liquitex that I, I am a little worried about using is when you put that on there it can really tighten the canvas and it can tweak the frame a little bit Ooh. you know so that's something to keep in mind like i wouldn't use it as your i wouldn't use it as standard operating procedure like yeah. try to get the canvas as straight as you can if you need to do that a little bit in your that makes sense like only emergencies yeah and, yeah because yeah. Yeah. Yep. i have we had we did have one that was a really long one part of it was the frame the frame had warped but uh the canvas had, had snugged up so tight and it actually kind of mm. twisted the canvas wow. frame a little bit. Wow. So. Yeah. So many different factors. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple right here real quick. Okay. okay now we're going to do that corner again. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't hurt to see some repetition. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Just like a package. Like that. Like the crease. That makes a nice mark. Cut out the triangle. I'm going to cut right down that one. I'm nice. just folding that. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways. Like I'm doing this one where I'm cutting out a little bit more material just to, yeah. you can get the corners even flatter. Uh -huh. The ways I just showed you, I, that's the way I prefer to do it. Okay. But this is another way where yeah. you can really eliminate all bulk. All bulk. Makes sense. It's nice to see some variations because everybody's going to be like, they'll yep. have their favorite way of doing it. Absolutely. Nice. Okay, so again, we're pulling tight. Yeah. This takes some muscle. It sure. does. Now, the only reason why is because this canvas is really, doesn't have a lot of pliability sure. to it. Sure. Other canvases, you're barely going to have to do it to get it tight. Oh. Okay, and then... Again, we just walk the canvas back up. Straight, yeah, straight up. Right. And then we're gonna cut right down that. And then we're gonna cut right down that. So there it looks like you cut out two shapes that are about similar. Yeah, correct. See, I so, can understand that a little better. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I say like, you know, watch a, watch a bunch of YouTube videos. Yeah. Everyone's got different ways of doing it. This one is gonna be the less, the least amount of bulk in it. Yeah. Okay. It just looks so professional. Yeah. When people see corners like that, they're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Well, Good job. <laughs> yeah, those things matter. I mean, it's funny. Every little thing matters. Yep. You have anyone that has a frame shop and they see these corners, they're going to be like, whoever did that, did it. <laughs> you know, you, you want to give your customer yeah. options, exactly. you know, and budgets. So. Exactly. Well, it's like I said, the more you can do yourself, the more money staying in your pocket. <laughs> and canvas stretching really is a super easy thing to do. And it's actually, I wouldn't say it's fun, but <laughs> it's nice to know that like you painted it, yeah. you stretched it, True. you kind of did everything. True. So. Yeah. In a frame shop, they will. They're, they're going to charge you, you know, they're going to charge you sixty, seventy dollars yeah. in labor to do this. Yeah, or more. And, yeah, <laughs> and when you get really good at this, I mean, you can do a canvas like this in about twenty minutes. Right. So it's not something that's. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my original way of doing my corners, All right. just sure. because. Okay. That's how I've always done them. Right. So you do that, okay. and then what I do is I cut this piece back like that. Uh -huh. So you have that There's triangle. Yeah, that's nice. So that's that's the this is the way I do it. The one I showed you last. Yeah. That's if you want to get maximum material out. Sure. I think for restretching purposes, this is the better way. Yeah, because it's a little bit more material. A little bit more material. Yeah, makes sense. 
And you can, I put a staple there or you can put a staple right there. It sure. doesn't really matter. But that means it'll hold it. Yep. Yeah. That's, I'm, I'm learning a lot uh, with these corners because I, I understand the folding part, but I didn't understand the cutting part yeah. and the securing. And that, and that's the hard part. And most people yeah. won't do, they're like, you're going to cut into it. I know. You know, it scares people, yeah. but you have, if you want to eliminate all that extra bolt, you yeah. have to cut it out. Yeah, yeah. sure. So we'll just cut down that middle and then you're going to cut that piece. And then what I like to do is I will run my scissors up it like that. Oh, yeah. And then I come across straight across like that. Sure. That makes sense. And then that just lays nice and flat. Yeah, that like looks that. really great. And then we'll finish up this and then I'll show you a hanger. Again, just cut on that corner. All right, nice. Okay, and you're done. Super. And then, again, um, if you're gonna trim, yeah. And so I don't think we need to. Yeah, honestly. we're not we're not yeah. going to on yours. But in in the future, if you if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna do a canvas, yeah. This is actually nice because it it acts as a natural guide for your knife blade. Okay. But if you're going to trim a canvas. You have to have something yeah. underneath as you oh. trim. Because invariably your knife's going to slip and it's going to go right through your canvas. Oh my gosh. So have something kind of rigid. That makes sense. Uh, but all we're going to do is we're going to just take a couple staples and we'll just put one there, yeah. there. Okay, and then we'll finish this off. Perfect, wow. And I know how to hang the wires, so I, mean, I don't okay. want you to go to that trouble, but. Yeah, know. so on the, on the wire hangers, I just like to put them on the inside sure. instead of on the top. Got it. But uh, when you do that, if you're gonna do them on the inside. Do that again, yeah. Do that again as you're putting your screw, because yeah. sometimes your screw oh. gun will pop off. And Do you use like can. a D-ring? Because that's probably what I would do. Yeah, a a nice chunky yep. D-ring. Yep. So those guys right there. Let's take a look at like, Why rated. don't you lay them here and, and then they can yep. sort of see what a D-ring looks so like. So it'll attach like that okay. on the inside of the frame. Uh -huh. And then you just run your wire over to there. This is good to know that um, like the, the long piece goes down yep. and then the little loop goes on the top. Correct. Like, that's it. how I do them. Yeah. Now, a lot of people will do them like that. Yeah. I, I, I just like don't that. like it. No, because that means you've got a bump on your wall. Well, not only know? that, but it tends to hold out away from the wall a little bit towards oh, okay. the top. Sure. And that's the other thing. So when you're doing this, don't put these down too low. In yeah. fact, about a third of the way down, okay. if you go too high, then your wire yeah. is tricky. I get it. But if you go too low, your canvas will hang out away from the wall, the top yes, of it. Yes, I see so. what you're saying. Okay, so about a third. That's yeah. usually what I... And one wire, one single wire that's rated for 50 pounds yeah. or whatever. I mean, these are so heavy. light. This weighs yeah. probably 20 pounds, 25 yeah. pounds. Yeah. Oh, but, um, so that's about, yeah, that's that's about nice. the tightness that you're going to have. Now, yeah. some canvases, when I stretch them, the, the ones that are really pliable canvas, you can get it to where it sounds like a drum. Oh it's, you want it super tight because it will sag. That's the other thing. Leaving the extra canvas, I would recommend it because canvases over time, frames, things like that, they will lose their tightness and it will um, need to be restretched uh, at some point. Okay. So having that extra material is nice. And how much, okay, so, so if you have a stretcher bar, how much in general extra canvas do you allow yourself? I, I need inches? yourself an inch, inch and a half. Only it, an inch and a half? Yeah, it, I mean, that's really all you need. If, oh. if you've got more, I'd leave it great. Yeah. But um, you need about an inch and a half okay. past. So when I say an inch and a half, you need an inch and a half pass, so oh. about that much. Okay. We had this much to work with, which was fine. Yeah. But it, typically when I print my G-clays, I leave about that much space just so they have plenty. So that's like a, okay, so an inch for, for the this part, this yeah, part so, plus yeah. So two. When yeah, when you're doing, so when I do like canvas that I know are going to be gallery wrapped, yeah. most stretcher frames are inch and a half deep. Okay. This okay. is actually, I think, it looks like it's close to inch and a half. Okay. Um, so I will do a two inch mirror in Photoshop. So I will mirror the edge of the painting two inches to accommodate for the inch and a half depth plus 
I'll have another half inch, quarter oh. of an inch that okay. wraps around. Got it. And then I'll have another inch and a half okay. of white canvas around that. Sure. That's when I'm stretching. I, obviously, your originals, Yeah. you know, you're going to measure them out to what they need to be. Okay, but, uh, super. But yeah, just double check it. I always kind of like to... It's nice to have a light right next to it, yes. and then you can oh, just look, look down it. Beautiful that and is. You can see yeah. it's perfectly straight. Look at that! No thank ripples. you. <laughs> yeah. Super simple. A, thank you. Thank you. How about a quick tour of your um, yep. your shop here? And if and anyone has ever has any questions, you can call me or email Aww. me, and I can walk you through it. Thank you, Nathan. But it's don't let it be intimidating because it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the cutting part. Yep. <laughs> Okay. So this so, is my shop. So I've done landscape photography, like I said, for about 23 years. Uh -huh. I have lots of stuff all over the American West. I've I'm wanted to be in think. Western Montana since I was that big and uh, get to photograph the area. So this is my passion, but I love printing and working with artists just about as much as doing this because they're just as passionate as I am about doing my art. So. Well, thank you, Nathan, so much. I'm going to take some close-ups of your okay. work. Thank you, Pam. Thank you so much.